Aloha. Welcome to Talk Story with John Waihe. Do we have a special show for you today? Let me, first of all, we're doing this show on a Thursday. This is a Thursday before my usual uh, time slot on Monday. And the reason why we're doing it is today is the last day of the Hawaii State Legislature. Now, most discussions post-legislative session deal with what passed and what didn't and, and the regular scorecard uh, approach. And, and, you, and for the viewers out there, you're going to be able to get that. The media will be full of it starting from tomorrow and Monday and so forth. All the scorecard. This is a special show for the political <laughs> junkies. We have with us today Blake Oshiro, who is a vice president with Capital Consultants, which means that he spends his entire day, every day during the course <laughs> of the session, dealing with our legislators. But even more interesting, prior to uh, becoming vice president of Capital Consultants, Blake also was a member of that legislative yes. uh, in the House of, uh, uh, House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. You were a majority leader? Or? Correct, for three years. Yeah, and which is a very powerful position. So, <laughs> welcome. Thank you very much, Governor. We would Thank love you. to have you here. You know, right as we speak, drama is happening in paradise. Yes, yes, it is quite a tumultuous day for the last day of the legislative session, which normally is a lot more just ceremonial yeah, and everybody saying their goodbyes. Yeah, um, this time you're going to see some changes on both sides, the Senate and the House, and it's quite major shifts, actually. And it's unusual. Very I, unusual. I was uh, thinking, uh, during my entire career, uh, I don't remember when change, uh, well, first of all, it's very rare that change happened uh, mid, 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 uh, mid, what do you call, midterm. Correct. Right, so the first year, the first session of a two-year term for the House, I think that maybe Jimmy Aki's presidency and the change was probably the last time that happened, but it only happened with one House. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, something more interesting. So, first of all, um, We'll start with the House of Representatives. Yes, uh, yes. Where you were a majority leader. And uh, now the, new, the current majority leader, Scott Psyche, is poised to, as I understand it, replace the Speaker of the House, Joe Suki. Correct. How did, how, what, what, give me something. <laughs> uh, so, you know, this is probably a long standing background on the dynamics between the House members. You know, if you may recall, about five years ago was when Joe Suki came into right. power. Um, and he had actually, at that time, replaced Calvin Say, who was the speaker for 12 years, but he well, you previously the had the majority leader Joe. for Calvin or for Correct. Joe? For Calvin. For Calvin. For okay, so you years. got replaced. Correct, yes, yes. So, um, you know, Joe was in power, then Calvin came into power, then Joe came back into power, and now it's going to be Scott Psyche. Um, all of those changes from Joe to Calvin, Calvin back to Joe, are largely attributable to Scott Psyche and Sylvia Luke. Um, those shifts and the balance of power occurred during those factions. So now Scott Psyche, who has been part of all of this for the, all these years, is finally going to be front and center. Correct. Publicly the speaker. Correct. So no longer can you sit behind the screen and play, you know, manipulate the emperor games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You actually got to be out front. Yeah, yeah. And, and the speakership is, you know, it's a difficult position because you have 51 members. In the Democratic caucus alone, you have, uh, you know, 45. And so it, when people talk about this idea of herding cats, that's really what it's like. And it's a bunch of cats, right? It's a, it's a big bunch. Um, you know, in the Senate, it's half the number. It's 25. Um, and it's a lot of herding cats, but those tend to think of themselves more like lions, right? <laughs> they, they, they have a different mentality about themselves and about their position because basically there's only 25 of them compared to 51 right. in the so, house. So, you know, Dickie Wong, who was, uh, Richard Wong was a very famous uh, Senate president, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as you know. And he used to tell me that the president's job and the speaker's was uh, being a social worker. He yeah. says that people 
mistake what the what the be, the qualification for that job is. It's listening to other people's problems all yeah. day long. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a lot of management of personalities. Um, when you're the speaker and or the majority leader, um, you're really doing a lot of traffic cop stuff. Um, you know, overall, what I tend to tell people is when it comes to the big big ticket items, the big priority issues, that's where the speaker and the leadership and the majority leader have a lot of influence. But on the day-to-day, -day, hundreds of other bills that are moving through the process, um, they're really more like a traffic cop. And yeah, it really is the committee the chairs, piece. yeah, kind of doing their thing. And oftentimes, committee chairs get into their own kind of turf battles. Sounds like you enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it, it, it was quite interesting. I mean, you, sometimes you're playing a referee, sometimes you're playing a mediator. Sometimes you just start the arbitrator and judge and say, nope, this is the way it is. So why does someone want to become speaker? I think there really is an opportunity to change the direction of the chamber and of the state. Um, and you really do have a lot of influence in terms of the high priority items and agenda items. And, and that's in large part where the leadership And one of the high priority be. items uh, this session, or at least one of the big issues this session, was the uh, funding for the mass transit project on, here on Oahu. Correct. And um, which takes us to what happened uh, with, the, with that particular issue and how the leadership changes uh, fit into all of this. Uh, so as I understand it, the House uh, um, seemed to uh, came up with one position, mm -hmm. which is normal. And then in the Senate, on the Senate side of this scenario, the Senate as a body, the Senate president, the traffic cop in the Senate, mm -hmm. and uh, others um, wanted to actually uh, fund the city. I don't know, they probably had some you know, conditions, mm -hmm. but they wanted to give a 10-year extension to the, uh, to the excise tax. But the Ways and Means chairman, Jill Takuda, uh, apparently didn't agree with her body. Correct. She, she was resistant to the idea of giving the city a free 10-year pass, was how she called it, um, giving them what they wanted without accountability. And so you had the tension of the people that supported rail, wanted them to have the full funding, versus the other people feeling like there needed to be somebody holding the city accountable. And that was the tension you kind of saw coming to a head in the bill. And it, it, it how, which takes us to Jill, because how the last time there was this dramatic a shift with the Ways and Means chairman, in my memory, uh, occurred with Ben Caetano. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but it occurred, you know, after the second half of the t of a two years uh, session. Which, by the way, I should I should let people know. Normally, we uh, the state legislature counts sessions as a two-year process. Correct, correct, yes. And so when what we're, what we're dealing with today is actually the ending of just half of this two-year process, right? So, it, but nevertheless, uh, in the past, the, the Senate waited until then served the full two-year process, and then they, they changed it. They did the same kind mm -hmm, of thing. Mm -hmm. But this is right in the middle of the session. How unprecedented is that? Right? It's fairly, un I mean, it's really, really unusual. You know, a lot of the reorganization happens bef after the election when you have a new slew of um, legislators coming in and then people count the numbers and then they kind of see where things lie in terms of the organization. Um, for it to happen at the end of session, you may recall two sessions ago on the you know second to the last day was when Ron Kochi became Senate President, right. taking over from Donna Kim. And that was unprecedented. That was very, very unusual. And so I just now begin to wonder if we're starting to see this sort of end of session sort of time and opportunity to reorg is now going to be the new norm. Could very well be. You yeah. know, it's, it's interesting to me, but that change in the middle of, um, middle of doing things 
it's usually reserved for city councils or county councils, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where there aren't really distinct um, time frames. Time frames. Yeah. And so, you know, Kochi, as you know, both Kochi and uh, former President um, Senator Kim mm -hmm, mm -hmm. were members of the councils. Yeah, yeah. Of the county councils. So they were actually kind of aware of doing things mm -hmm, like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, usually, at least in my 11 years in the legislature, every session kind of ends with a lot of people being unhappy, right? If right. you think about it, right. there's hundreds of bills. At the end, all of them are not going to pass. Uh, somebody's going to end up not happy. A, a handful of people will end up upset. Sometimes the emotion is higher than others. Um, but I think in this session, what you saw was emotions were at a really high, high peak. And that was why you saw these shifts kind of occurring just at the end. You know, you know, rail, whether you're for it or against it, the bill really was the thing that sort of brought to light the fractures between the House and the Senate and also the fractures within Internal. each chamber. Right. Um, and it became such a hot issue that that's where people ended up having to pick sides. And no. once you picked the side, then the only thing you could do was try to force it on the other guys. Well, one of the things that may happen, which would be unfortunate, is that it might be a creation of instability. I mean, in, in the past, every session, people are unhappy with this or that project didn't get funded and, and, and the like. But it's usually you, you tolerate it. Mm -hmm. It's part of the game. Yeah. But when you get to this point where you actually start taking people out, all those little slights get to be more important than they might yeah. have otherwise been. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and so, you know, I think we, we all should have some concern. This may become, unfortunately, um, maybe the norm in the future. Maybe it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping not. You know, there's a thing to be said about the stability of the institution and the need for there to be some reliability on transition between one session to the next session and carrying things over. Um, you know, sometimes change is good, but sometimes abrupt change may not necessarily be the best medicine for the problem. You know, what are the, since this is a show for us political junkies, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. One of the, the, nor the normal uh, situations is that when you reorganize a body or you organize a body, generally speaking, the speaker or the president and the Ways and Means Chairman or the Finance Chairman, that's two critical positions. Correct. And they usually walk in lockstep. But it didn't seem like this was happening any, uh, in this particular case. Uh, is that correct? I mean, was there... Uh, why? Why would? Um, or why would the uh, these two positions actually be either challenged or challenged by the leadership of the institution? Yeah, I think it really goes back to some of the underlying sort of fractures within each body, right? Uh, for those of your political junkie watchers, you know, no. Uh, speaker or president comes into power purely on their own. They come together because different factions form, combine to create the requisite numbers, 26 in the House and 13 in the Senate. And based off of that, that's how you determine your structure. And so oftentimes what you need to do is make sure that your two factions, usually the head, the speaker or the president, and the money chair, are kind of in different factions because you're bringing together oh, yeah. two different groups in order to rise above. Sometimes that's not always the case. I would say like under uh, Calvin Say's watch when he had Marcus Oshiro, Marcus was his kind of number one lieutenant and so therefore, you know, he and Calvin were very, very close. Um, but, you know, in the Senate, we, we Joe's faction was different than Ron's faction. Right. Yes. And we're, we're, we're going to come back uh, to talk about this inside of politics right after this short break. But uh, stay with us, folks. This is a most exciting program. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carol Cox. I'm the new host of Eyes on Hawaii. Make sure you stay in the know on Hawaii. 
Join us on Tuesdays at 12 noon. We will see you then. Aloha. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others. And in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. You're watching ThinkTech on ThinkTechHawaii.com, which broadcasts five live talk shows from noon to 5 p.m. every weekday, and then streams our earlier shows all night long. Great content for Hawaii from ThinkTech. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe and my guests, Representative, Vice former President, representative. Blake uh, Oshiro, a former Majority Leader. Yeah. By the way, if you got a question, our number here is 415. 871-2474. Okay, so all of this is happening. All of these factions are floating yes, around. Yes. Exciting stuff. Where's yes. Joe Suki and Marcus Oshiro yeah. in the house? That, that's the old faction. That's the ruling faction of yesteryear, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, oh, Calvin Say. Right? Calvin so Say. Cal Calvin so Calvin Say. and Marcus, you know, they still have their little group. Um, they're a little group, unfortunately, the numbers have dwindled down a little bit. And so they're largely left a little bit on the sidelines in the so last So they weren't part sessions. of any of this? No, no. I think there was an attempt in the last minute to see if they could combine with somebody. But seeing as how Scott Psyche had the numbers, I think the numbers yeah, were the numbers. It probably went the way that water should flow, which is downhill. But it would have yes. been so historically <laughs> interesting yes. if Calvin made a return. Yes. Right? Yes. Wouldn't that be kind of like, whoa, what happened here? Yes. He, you know, because he replaces Suki, Suki comes back, replaces. Yeah, yeah. It would have been like, my, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, it's never not ending to be. circle, um, but yeah, it, you know they're they're still there. They're still doing their thing, um, but they just weren't able to play really, the part. Yeah, be a big significant factor in this view. In this view, okay. So now, what happens? I mean, if we have new leadership, is there any kind of sense that you might have for the change in direction that might occur when the in the on the city level, city council level? Um, when Ernie Martin was chairman of the of the council, there was a uh, a lot of friction with the mayor, mm -hmm. the mayor's office, or, or at least appearance wise. Um, and now with the with Ron Minoa being chairman of the city council, there seems to be a deliberate attempt to work with the administration. Yes, yes. Uh, will that? The relationships, uh, will the relationships change um, as a result of this reorganization? Will it mean they'll be closer to the governor, farther apart from the executive branch, or no change at all? I don't know if I foresee much change happening, actually. Um, you know, uh, Rep Psyche and Sylvia Luke, they have been cohorts for a long time. Yeah, we, find, we get back to the idea of the speaker and the... And the ways in, I mean, finance, finance share. share being close. Correct. Close I mean, they, they will, I doubt there will be any time where you see publicly them diverging on anything. Um, in the Senate, you know, uh, now that it appears to be Senator De La Cruz taking over, he is also with uh, Ron Kochi's group. And so I would also expect that you would see those two sort so of So we, we get hand back hand. to a more traditional model of uh, organization. That's Correct. Really and so I, I think that there will be, uh, uh, at least on appearance sake from the outside, it'll look like the two chambers, the two power positions are kind of walking together. Whether those two positions will now be able to bridge between them and the House and the Senate, that has to be seen. Vis-a-vis you know? -vis the administration. Correct. Correct. Well, you know, it was interesting to me was that the governor seemed so hands-off. Um, and, and frankly, in my own experience, I, I don't know if I could have stayed away from this, but I am a junkie. I mean, this, yeah, is, yeah, a, yeah. this is a, this show is a personal yeah. indulgence, okay? It's a personal <laughs> indulgence. It's one for me. But, you know, I don't know if I could have stayed out of it, but he seemed to have uh, stayed out of the fray. And I wonder, um, 
whether as a result of these changes he'd get more involved in the future or less involved. You know, I, I, this is just my speculation based off of his behavior in the past three years. I would say it's not going to change much. You know, he, good or bad, some people interpret it as a bad thing, some people interpret it as a good thing. He re, just has a respect for the legislative process, and so he rarely, rarely intervenes in that process. Um, you rarely see him coming down with a directive or any sort of indication of what direction he wants to see an issue take. Um, so he kind of hands over his budget, and then he identifies his priorities, and sort of whatever happens, happens. And in large part, even some of his directors, when I have spoken to them, say, you know, um, it is sort of hands off. He le mm. lets us run um, in our lane and do whatever we need to do. Sometimes they end up crossing hairs a little, and that confuses the legislature. But the governor has a very almost sort of deliberative sort of respect for that body and its process to let it do whatever it's going to do. So on one side, the good, the good way of looking at it is he respects the process. The criticism is that he's not really providing clear leadership. So it depends on the issue. Well, you know what's interesting is that all of this sort of saw the rise of, of certain people. On the executive branch, it seems like the, I don't know whether this means that the governor intends to take a more active role in the future, but he just brought on, I guess, uh, Dan Ishii. Dan Ishii, uh -huh. Dan Ishii which, uh, who has been around, mm -hmm, actually, mm -hmm. since he and I were in the Young Democrats together. So he's past, you know, Medicaid age, yeah. I think. <laughs> uh, not one of the young guys, yeah, anyway, yeah. but he's brought in. And Dan's uh, talent is actually pulling stuff together, prioritizing. Uh, and uh, interfering, if you yeah. will. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how that all fits. It will. I, I think there is some new faces up there on the fifth floor, and we'll see how it all kind of shakes out. I think now that you're going to have Psyche there, you'll have Dela Cruz controlling the money on the Senate side, it, it'll be a new dynamic. Um, Dela you know, Cruz controlling the money, I mean, uh, forgive me, a Senator. But Dela Cruz for giving the money is like uh, putting the fox in the henhouse. You know? <laughs> well, he, he is always looking for the economic development opportunity. The guy is Actually, creative it, it, in his he's mindset. He's extremely creative. Yeah, I mean, he comes, he comes up with ideas about how to spur economic development that, to me, are amazing. You know, some and and worthy, them, worthy of conversation. Yeah, he is not a bean counter. That's C my correct. point. Yeah. He's definitely not a bean counter. He is an issues person. No, he, yeah, I mean, he is. He, 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 he tries to, as you say, support economic development. Yeah, and, and he likes to see projects not only and, and handle projects and see them bloom, right? He's not one to just kind of say, well, he's Here's the usually, you go and do it. He's usually the guy that the Ways and Means chairman is restraining. Yes, yes. So this is going to be interesting. It is. It, and, it'll and, be an interesting dynamic, yeah. Uh, uh, and I actually think it might be positive. I, I, you know, I, I, well, anyway, the other interesting individual that's come out, uh, risen up, is... Uh, Senator Kaheli, you know, his father mm -hmm, died, mm -hmm. and I think it was uh, Governor Abercrombie that put uh, put him, yes. uh, you know, appointed him in office, and then he won his own term. But he seemed to have been uh, for a really sophomore player in the in the state senate, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a busy, active, you know, yes. one of those what, what's the name of the the bunny in, yeah, in the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the with the with the uh, battery. Yeah, he had a much more front facing role this session. You know, he was very proactive and out front on a lot of issues, um, and so he's one to definitely watch and see how yeah, it's going to come about. I think he's going to be see how that he all fits into all of this, and, mm -hmm. and and as a result, whether that means that we'll see. Um, a continuation, or maybe even a resurgence of, um, of neighbor island power in mm -hmm. all of this, because uh, I, I, it seems like a lot of money went to the big island. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. You'll have um, Ron, uh, Kochi continuing from, you know, from Kauai, 
And now you're going to have, on the health side, it's going to be Psyche, Urban, Honolulu, and Luke, who is Nu'uanu. So it'll be an interesting dynamic, once again, to see this sort real, of Real, real fast, because we are running out mm -hmm. of time. What happened to Debt with Dignity? Just real quick. Uh, so the bill made it out of the Senate in a pretty strong vote of only three no's and 22 ayes. Um, unfortunately, when it got to the House, there was just a lot of reluctance. I wouldn't say there was strong opposition. It wasn't where people were jumping up and down and saying they didn't want the bill. I think there was just a lot of hesitation as okay. to whether this so, is the right time. Yes, no. Will there be a special session? I think there will be. And will the debt with dignity bill have a chance to be come up in the special session? No. The upper day, no. no. In, in a special session, they have to start off with a new bill, three readings on both sides. So I, I don't see them reviving an old bill and putting it back in the hopper. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining us. And uh, especially thank you to well, Representative you, Vice President uh, Blake O'Shea <laughs> for Governor. this insider's view of what's happening in our Hawaii State Legislature.